Well, I was always told growing up that my father was brought up in a camp in Culver City. And even he died 10 years ago. And on his obituary, the very first thing I said was he was born in the Pacific Electric Railroad Camp. Um, and I thought everybody knew where this camp was. And then come to find out, nobody knew the camp even existed. I even talked to, I think he was the president of the Pacific Railway, um, I don't know, some kind of organization. And he wasn't aware of it. Culver City Historical Society wasn't aware of it. And I actually had to show the man from Pacific Electric, my dad's birth certificate, which says he was born in the Pacific Electric labor camp. The camp was uh, right in the middle of Robertson Boulevard, uh, Washington Boulevard, Venice Boulevard, and National Boulevard. It was right in the middle. Wooden little houses, they were wood, like in a row, mm -hmm. like in a row, and uh, in the, and then there was three. One row had maybe I think around eight little little separate little houses. So three rows, which made it look like a U, and uh, and then in between there was a, um, a a ladies' bathroom, and they were flush toilets, and they were always very clean. But the shower. We had an outside shower, and these were outside, the uh, toilets, of course. And then the shower was outside, and it was connected to the, to, the, uh, to the bathrooms, and it was large, a large room where maybe two or three could shower at one time. And there was just one for the women. Part I think they were there 30 years, because I had seen them on the 19, 20, 30, and 40 census living in the camp in Culver City. Uh -huh. So that's uh -huh. Robertson. Yeah. Yes. Can you see, where is it? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, well, uh, behind that, right in the middle, because that's on the corner. So behind it, right in the middle of that block. Uh, there were no buildings. There was nothing here. There was no buildings at all. I just remembered, right on, um, uh, Robertson Boulevard and Venice Boulevard, there was a little neighborhood market and it was very small. So it didn't have a lot of things that my mom would buy. So um, I remember my dad walking there to that little neighborhood store and he would buy 25 pounds of flour. They were in a sack, a flour sack and it was 25 pounds, and he would carry it home, and my mom made tortillas with that flour. And then he would buy a, a bag of, also a sack of beans, pinto beans. Later on, there came a uh, gas station on the corner of Robertson and Washington, and there was a house. There was a house, like a big house, and a lady lived in there alone and I don't remember her name, but she was very, very nice. And I would go there and, and wash her dishes, and she would give me 25 cents. And then we would play cards. She kind of taught me how to play cards. Remember mm -hmm. paper, made, mm -hmm. uh, paper made pens? Mm -hmm. They started, uh, the, uh, the, the shop where they made them was a national boulevard. Oh, really? oh. And so I went to work there. Where we lived in the Pacific Electric Camp, in the front had a huge square, just a big square of green, beautiful grass with three trees on it. And the trees were like first base, second base, third base. And then there was, there was a bush. Her home was a big bush full of bees. Always had bees. <laughs> and so we would play baseball out there. Some, there were some children that lived there, but not very many, not very many children. My grandmother's family and my grandfather's family lived next door to each other. She was 17, he was 20. So they lived next door to each other in the camp. They're on the census, the Sanchez family and the Heredia family. I have also the records, um, time cards of the Pacific Electric from 1917, 1919 that has my grandfather 
my great-grandfather and Leo, your uncle, on there. You know, um, like weeds would grow over the tracks and uh, they would get loose and, and then when it rained, they would flood. I don't know, I'm not sure what they did then, but they would come and wake up the, like my dad, they would wake him up and he'd have to get up at night and he would go wherever they would go. I don't know what they did with the, uh, when it was flooded. I remember it was Sawtell and Venice Boulevard because there's that, Sawtell's a hill and the water was all on Venice Boulevard. I don't know how they got rid of it, maybe they, I don't know. Therefore, when I started high school, I was taking the trolley to Venice High School and I had to catch that one trolley. If I didn't catch that one, I would be late. I was never late, not one time. In the 40s, I was still taking that trolley car to Venice High School. So that was 49 and 48 and 49 or 49, 50, I don't know. Anyway, so therefore, it was right after that that they took the trolley cars away and um, uh, the buses came. I was around three years old or so, and, uh, and so all my siblings, older siblings, they were in school, so I was home. At that time, my mom had a, a, scrub, a scrub board like this. So she must have been busy. And so all of a sudden, she said she came out to the front where the grass is, and there was a train that had stopped, and, um, and it was starting to move. And I was by that train, like right almost underneath it, and my mom started yelling, screaming, and she said that a boy came out. I don't know where the boy came out. It must have been my guardian angel, because she said he was only around nine, or just a young boy. He came, and he ran, to the train and grabbed me by the dress and pulled me out. And the train started to move. The train was moving. Wow. So, you know, she, of course she, I didn't get a spanking because I was very young, very little, and I was spoiled. When the census was coming around, my mom didn't, didn't speak English. She understood, so therefore I was uh, uh, translating uh, for her. They were asking questions, the census. And uh, I'll never forget, on the census, all it had was black, it had black, yellow, and white. I remember those three. And so we had to mark white. There was no brown. Then, and then it says, are you rich, comfortable, or poor? And I was ready to say poor. I wasn't even going to ask my mother. But I did ask her, what are we? I know we're not rich. Are we comfortable or poor? She said comfortable. So that's what I told the lady, but that's not true. We were poor because I remember being hungry. One time, I was so hungry that there was an egg, an egg, a, a not cooked egg. <laughs> and I, I was so hungry, I cracked a hole on it and I drank it and it went down, slimy. And I said, oh, I'll never, ever eat another raw egg again. And I haven't to this day. And I see it in that movie, Rocky, where mm -hmm. he eats it. And oh, it just makes my stomach, because I remember <laughs> doing that. <laughs> <laughs>